Dr. Sam Osmanagic, please tell us about the connection of the Bosnian pyramids to the cosmic internet. It's been since 2005 that we started the Bosnian pyramid project. It started as archaeological digging, but then we expanded to interdisciplinary scientific projects. Then, due to the energy properties that we've been investigating, that was the third aspect. And then we got spiritual aspect and self-healing aspect. We realized that pyramids are actually huge energy amplifiers using existing natural energy sources. In the case of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, which is the biggest and the oldest pyramid on the planet, We've noticed that through series of measurements, four, five independent researchers from Italy, Croatia, Serbia, Germany, Finland, and other countries, we have very interesting phenomena measured on the very top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. First, it started in 2010 when the physicist Slobodan Mizra from Croatia detected and measured electromagnetic beam, which was four and a half meters radius, focused and continuous of frequency of 28 kilohertz. Later on, it was confirmed by Serbian electrical engineer, Goran Marjanovic, but also by Finnish sound engineer, Heike Savolainen. And then finally, we have a team from Italy, led by Professor De Bertolis, anthropologist from the University of Trieste. So four teams coming at four different times, bringing their own equipment, but getting the same measurements. Well, this is an independent international scientific verification of the phenomena. Energy beam going through the top of the Bosnian pyramid of the sun. In September of 2016, another team from three countries, Croatia, Slovenia, and Serbia, led by electrical engineer Goran Marjanovic, did very systematic measurements again, above the top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, using the drone. So they were flying about 50 meters above the top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. The way they were doing it, they would fly a few meters, and then going left, right, back and forth, for about 50 meters. Another few meters, left, right, back and forth. That way they covered a huge area around the top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. And these are their conclusions. This energy beam, but this particular time, this is electrical field. It goes like energy beam, four and a half meters wide, and then it starts to expand. And then at 21 meters, it is the strongest and widest. And then it's coming back to the narrow beam, and then again, expanded, narrow, expanded, narrow. So, it is elongated, ellipsoid. Now, the engineers knew immediately that it was some form of the standing waves, or torsion fields, or rather popular term, scalar waves. Now, scalar waves have been investigated by Russian scientists for the last 40 years. If you have a torsion field, it means that you have a base to create the speed of those waves which is much bigger than the speed of light. Of course, according to Einstein theory, the biggest speed in the universe is the speed of light. And really, 300,000 kilometers per second is a big speed. Einstein claimed that this is the biggest one because after that, we start to dematerialize. Well, from our planetary standpoint of view, this speed is quite enough. If I generate the light here in Croatia, it will be seen in New York City within a second. However, if we create the light here in, on our planet, it will be seen on our sun in seven and a half minutes. So it takes time for the light to get to the sun. Now imagine if you need to send the light or the information from our planet to the center of our galaxy, Milky Way. It takes 40,000 years. 
And if you are sending the information to the center of the universe, billions of years. Now let's imagine that we are creator of the universe. First we started creating galaxies. There are at least 400 billion galaxies. And each galaxy has stars. Our galaxy, Milky Way, 10 years ago, astronomers thought had about 100 billion stars. Today, 2017, they are talking about 400 billion stars. And just one of them is our sun. And then, in most cases, suns, stars, they have their own planets. Our sun has nine planets. And then some of the planets have their own moons. We have one, but then Jupiter or Saturn, they have dozens of them. So now imagine, you've created such a vast space with so many cosmic bodies. You are creator. And of course, you want to be in touch with all your babies and your emperor. How to communicate with them? If you use the speed of light, of course it is not sufficient. If you send the information to our planet, it takes four or five billion years. It takes another four or five billion years to get the information back. How to check the health frequencies of all these planets and stars and galaxies? You need something much quicker. Well, the torsion fields or scalar waves are 10 billion times quicker than the speed of light. 10 billion times. Meaning that you can move the information from one area in the space in the universe to another one almost immediately. So now we are getting the ability, the tools for something that I named the cosmic internet. From before we knew that this energy beam going through the top of the Bosnian pyramid of the Sun is getting stronger as it moves away from the pyramid. So theoretically it could move through our ionosphere, through our solar system, going to another solar system, reaching another planet, establishing energy bridge. And then through this energy bridge you can send information, the frequencies. And then of course the pyramid is a very powerful communication device. But the problem is the rotation of our planet. Because it moves so quickly, if you, if you aim one particular planet, it is just a fraction of one second that you can reach this planet. So, it would be very unpractical to try to send information because information goes all around the space. However, when we did the measurement in uh, fall of 2016, we've noticed that this energy beam, this electrical field, the scalar waves, are actually moved to the sun because they were mostly directed south, southwest, west. Why? Because we did our measurements at the noon time, 2, 3 p.m. And of course, sun at the noon is exactly south. 2, 3 p.m. it goes southwest and finally west. So the energy beam basically is directed to the sun. And sun is the biggest cosmic body around us. And most of the time it is visible on the horizon. So this energy beam, basically, it seems, exchange the information through and with our sun. So if that is the case, we are sending information from our planet to the sun, from sun to the center of our galaxy, from center of our galaxy to the center of the universe and back. Because the pyramids, they are transmitters of information but they also act as the antenna. They receive the information, so it goes both ways. So I would say this is one of the greatest discoveries in this project so far, and that's the reason why this is the most exciting project in the world of archaeology at this moment. Do you believe that there is information coming from the center of the galaxy in the scalar waves to the pyramids on our planet or to other planets in the galaxy? I believe that since every planet resonates, it has its own frequency, that there is a way 
to communicate between the planets and their suns and the suns and the centers of their galaxies and even uh, between two different solar systems but with the pyramid you are getting focused energy beam and this information is amplified with this most powerful geometrical shape that is the shape of the pyramid so the information goes directly to the sun in our case of course this is just the beginning so we will need a lot more work we will need drones that they fly hundreds and hundreds of meters above the pyramids. And then finally to use the satellite to see what's really happening with those energy beams. But this is very, very exciting discovery at this point. Is this helical beam above the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun able to pick up information as well as send it? It's very logical. It acts as the emitter, and receiver. And is there a way to test the reception of information in the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun? We'll need some time to figure out how to do that. But I believe there is a way. Of course, we have not, um, we don't have really a good scientific instruments for this type of measurements. I believe there are some types of energy that we cannot even measure because we cannot develop those scientific instruments. What we can measure, we can measure electromagnetism, we can measure electrical fields, we can measure magnetic fields, we can measure ultrasound, infrasound, sound, we can measure the percentage of organ energy. But I believe that there are some more forms of energy that we are not aware of. Is the work of Goran Marjanovic, electrical engineer from Serbia, on the forefront of scientific inquiry? Definitely it is because Goran Marjanovic is one of the few people on the planet who understands Nikola Tesla's work very well. So I believe with his uh, engineering mind, he's been able to realize how this complex in Visoko works. It's not just one pyramid, it's at least five pyramidal structures. Plus, we have tumulus complex, we have underground tunnels in several layers. So he realized that the distance between those structures was very important. And the ancient builders did everything to amplify all these energies. And interestingly enough, the beams from Bosnian Pyramid of the Moon, Tumulus in Vratnica, and other structures, they act as a support for the key structure, which is the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. Are the pyramids in Bosnia Tesla energy machines? Tesla was the gentleman who was thinking out of the box. Today, we are based on the technology which is based on Hertzian waves. Tesla was dealing with something else, with some type of the non-Hertzian waves. He was looking for the ways for the interplanetary communication. When he built his Wardenclyffe Tower in the state of New York 100 years ago, he did only one experiment. But after this experiment, he concluded that he had found ways to transfer huge quantities of information or energy, thousands of horsepowers between two planets, regardless of their distance. The frequency that he was using, 28 kilohertz, the same one that we measure on the top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. So it seems that this is the frequency for the interplanetary communication. One final question. What would Nikola Tesla say if he visited the Bosnian Pyramid complex today and found out what kind of work you've been doing there scientifically? I think he would be very happy, but probably he would understand this pyramid much, much better than we do, especially me. I act basically as a PR. I don't have a technical mind, but I'm very exciting, very enthusiastic when I see so much information coming from different fields. I think he would help us to understand better how these machines work, how, uh, how those machines that we have in the heart of Bosnia how they were built, what is the true purpose. 
and how he can improve them. And I think that would help us a lot. It would shorten our scientific way. But even with this, I think it is important that we try to use the knowledge from the ancient builders of Bosnian pyramids and uh, apply some of that knowledge in our society. Because when you see on conceptual level, everything we do with the energy is wrong. For example, our energy source is coal, which is based for dirty industry, oil and gas, limited sources. Electricity, 220 volts here in Europe, 110 in the US, very bad frequency for us. The mobile phones, you put it your, near your ear, you burn your brain cells. TVs, computers, microwaves, all wrong on conceptual level and when it comes to frequencies. It seems like somebody intentionally produced through our technology the worst frequencies for us that will damage our brain, that will slow down our processing. So, once you have some type of zombies on this planet, it's very easy to manipulate and control them. On the other hand, the ancients were using existing energy sources because they knew if you have iron below the ground, it generates electromagnetic fields. If you have underground water, it releases negative ions. If you have a couple of underground waters at different depths, you get the electrical field down there. You have places, you know, of course, with the magnetic energy, you have places with more negative ions, and then they were producing the most powerful shapes, the shape of the pyramid. When they put the shape of the pyramid above energy potent places, they amplify those energies. When they use the power of quartz crystal, which receives and amplifies the energy, you got a big help to your energy complex. When they have cavities or tunnels in several levels, they amplify the energies. Some other minerals amplify the energies. When your pyramids are at the places where volcanic lines come and intersect, amplifies the energies. So the ancients were smart because those energies were simply at the right frequencies for us, for all living beings. When we are born, we are born in the resonance of the planet, which used to be 7.83 Hz, the Schumann resonance. The pyramids maintain the same resonance. You go outside the pyramid fields, you got 9, 10, 12, 15 Hz. Very bad for us. We are not in our natural energy fields anymore. That's why we have things to learn from the ancient pyramid builders. And finally, for those who claim that there are no pyramids in Bosnia, they have been there tens of thousands of years because we got burned. They will be there thousands of years after we are long gone. So why don't we use our short lifespans, try to learn and apply that knowledge and improve our society. And now one final question before what I'm sure is going to be a wonderful lecture here in Rijeka, Croatia. And we've got a lot of people waiting outside to, to hear you talk. Would you say that Nikola Tesla is the father of the phenomenon that you have named the cosmic internet? He was the first one in our civilizational cycle, which lasts for about 10 to 12,000 years, who would understand what was happening in the universe, how to use the energy which is already there, pre-existing, instead that we try to find our own ways and invent hot water. So yes, he was the father of everything that's been happening even today. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Very welcome.